All right, what's up, everybody? What's up, Pedro? Alright, what's up everybody? What's up, Pedro? <clears throat> Alright, we should have uh, everything ready to go. What's up, man? Alright, so today's day 242, I think, making Song Ringer. I just looked at it. I should know by now. Uh, today I'm going to be making Growback Tiles. These are going to be sweet. So, Inspired by Super Metroid. Did Metroid have this? I'm not sure. But there's gonna be something like this where you can, you have to use the sword um, to be able to, like, you be able to kill some, there'll be like some thicket bushes or something, right? You can use your sword to destroy the bushes, but they grow back after a few seconds. Sort of like an alien plant that's hyperactive or something like that, or maybe even an organism. So, that's today's goal. <clears throat> yeah, the most rewarding day of your thesis? Why is that? What made it so rewarding? First thing we're going to need is a tile type. And let's place a couple of these, even though we don't even have them defined yet. Let's place a couple uh, around the home point, the screen that we were just on. So we know we got a couple of them we can play with. And perhaps around this bike crash tile, or they're near here, maybe to the right of it. Okay, to grow back. Uh huh. Yeah. Right on, man. Awesome. High five, dude. What's up, Extreme? Alright, now we should have a few of those to play with. We also need, oh yeah, we need a method to be able to create these kind of tiles. So, create waterfall tiles like these. Similar up here. This is a similar in importance to these rocks, mountains. These very basic types of tiles. This is a growback tile. It'll have a different skin depending on what kind of area the player is currently in. Just hooking it all up now, hooking up the method to be able to create them. Uh, what's up, Mighty Nest? Extreme, um, it's important to clarify what Xcode is. Xcode is an integrated development environment. That means it's got a compiler, basically, and a debugger, and a code editor, right? That's what an, an, an IDE, that's what an IDE is. IDEs don't have anything to do with making a game graphically, game graphics or not, 2D, 3D, just text-based. 
That has nothing to do with Xcode, really. Um, what you need to make a game with graphics is a library. So you would need something like Coco Studio X or Unity or Unreal Engine. Those are all game engines or game libraries, however you want to think about those. And they, they're what make a game graphical. What's up, Alex Pita? Oh yeah, there's this, you guys. If you have Franker faces, there's Wiz. Wiz Jib, that's all, Wiz Jib. Oh, the last thing we'll need to do is hook up uh, this tile type. Here's where we create a water tile. We'll create a grow back tile as well. What will a grow back tile be for now? Hmm, perhaps just, we need some kind of graphics for it, else it'll just be weird. Let's do stat then. Um, let's make it look like, uh, okay, so this is something for you guys that just joined. Um, I'm making grow back tiles, so it's totally super Metroid inspired. Um, you can you can use your sword to attack a certain type of tile. It's like a, maybe a thicket or something like that, or some kind of alien life form, and you attack it, and um, it for a moment it's gone, but then it grows back. So it's sort of like an obstacle that requires the sword or some other kind of damaging type weapon to get past it. Yes. Wizrock, Wiz Top Hat. Totally. Let me put that on my to do list. Maybe I'll just do it now. No, no. I want to keep doing what I'm doing now with the grow back tiles, but I'll do this later. This is a great idea. The top Hat, Rock. At least maybe some other ones for fun. Yeah, position render component is we create a profile for these. You drop. If I should do his face or what? Yeah, so we'll leave, let's push back a profile component as well. Yeah, that guy. These are auto Z. So we'll do one color of them. I don't know what to keep. I guess white for now. Color equals color 3B. White. White. Bonjour. Bonjour. Hardcore. Did you see this? Eh? Wiz Jib. Filter static. Tile size. Really, this is all we need. We don't need to. Oh. Don't have a method for this if this is valid. Pause. Yeah, I've already got that. Mm -hmm. Is valid. Pause. X, Y. Going good, man. How you doing? How you doing today? What's up, Arcane? Orangia. What's up, yo? 
Jib, we got Jib. Jib's an emote. <clears throat> nice. Yay. Yay. You like the dark too? Yeah. The only thing I don't like about the dark is when I highlight stuff. I can barely read it, but it's all right. No, I haven't. Is it good? Okay, next we need a profile. So it'll be similar to, I mean, it's just a, just a block. So, I mean, we can base it off of just about anything. Door, I guess, no, dart, dart. This is kind of this really simple entity right here. Copy this one, call this the grow back. Really, really. I love keeping my eye out for new games. Yeah, okay, wait. So I was looking at this. I was looking at Better TV today. Better T TV. But um, doesn't it do the same thing that Franker Faces already does? I mean, why, why do I need BT TV and Franker Faces? Oh, yeah. I've already... The RPG game where you don't have to destroy anyone. Can you guys hear that? Oh, no, that's muted on mine. Here, I guess you can. Cool. Oh, so you can use both? You also use both. Ah. Okay, well, let me try it. Let me try it. Let's dive in. Are you sure? I guess I'm sure. Okay, so do I gotta ref I'm gonna refresh this, see if that affects stuff over here. How it affects it. Right, we got the oh I like this. These graphics are better. And I can actually read it when I highlight it, that's good. So this thing does it still show uh, it still shows Franker faces? Okay. Hey, look, it actually loaded my chat history, too. It's, it's worth it only for this. All right, we're keeping it. We're keeping it. Okay, so growing back. We don't want it to flash. We want a collision category. Static collides with none. Tile size is. Wait a minute, am I even creating it this way? I don't know. Let's give it a shadow. No move. These can these can never move. Okay, um, we'll make it the same as the the um. The wooden spikes. Wood spike. Wood spike zero. Uh, 
uh, and then we'll make another one for when it um, shrink and grow. I think the grow, wait, one of these needs to be reversed. I think this one, reverse. And we don't need a behavior yet. Yeah, is this some cool stuff here? Whoa, it really is. Black chat. Whoa, what? Oh, this is for chroma key. Whoa. I like unblack in chat. There we go. Dark mode's cool. Ooh, we got some blacklist highlights. Set scroll back amount. What's the maximum amount of lines you want your chat to show? This is pretty nice, huh? Oh, the game's great, man. Yeah, I did change the Z shell. <laughs> One more, right? All uh, right. Um, Z shell. Yeah. What? Okay. I had some questions about Z shell. What was I? What was I wondering about Z shell? I don't know. I'll, I'll ask if I remember. Can I remember it? But yeah, Meringue, the great game's going great, man. Let's see what it looks like with this new grow back thing. If that even worked just now. Yep, I don't see them yet, but they should be over here. Wait, he yeah, here they are. They're empty tiles, but they're right here. So what I'm creating today is um, some grow back tiles. So you'll be able to look like sh swing your... You guys can hear that sound, right? Yeah, I think you can. Um, so you'll be able to kill some tiles, right? Or, or some blocks, wherever you clear them, and they can grow back. So yeah, other than that, the game's going great. It's going awesome. Lots of camera work this week. It's been really, <clears throat> really productive. Wow, there's a lot of options. How do I not show the time? Preview, oh wow, I can preview images? That's awesome. Hide spam, great. Uh, I'm not getting all of them, but pride. Tab completion. Is that it, Tyho? Am I dark? Uh, you know what? I've actually been playing with this a lot lately. I've already played with this a lot, and it already is pixelated, believe it or not. And um, I tried some other ways. I tried making it less pixelated, and um, it didn't quite work out. So I'm not going to do that quite on this stream. I, got, I really would rather create this cool new entity type. Ah, I can't see any way to turn turn off these numbers. I don't want to see all that time. Oh well, timestamps. I don't want them. 
Oh, check that out. If I turn that on, it turns... Wait, there. It's gone! Yay! Don't let your chat beat dreams beat dreams. <laughs> Tab completion? Is it cool? What does it do again? Like what? If I go whisper? Oh, check that out. Oh, I can... Wow, look at that. I private messaged our core with tab completion. That was really nice, actually. Or if I want to go, um, like I want to say something to at... Oh, tab completion is really nice. <laughs> I know what this means. I know what this means. All right, we should have gotten this thing to work. Wood spike zero. Oh, unless wood spike zero is underground. Let's figure that out. Yeah, wood spike zero is underground. So the last one is wood spike, wood spike seven. Uh, what did I do? See that, there we go. This is the problem I have. Okay, this is what I'm talking about with Z shell. <laughs> Sorry, man. It was it was the first thing that I got the the tab autocomplete. Lighter thief, what's up, man? Oh, you don't need the ad anymore. Awesome. Check that out. Oh, but it didn't type at. Oh well. Does that matter? Huh. Same thing, right? Okay, so R core. Here's my challenge with Z shell, right? I go like this. If I I go uh, whatever CD raw, I go tab tab again. See how I did a, just single two single tabs right there, and now it's got CD raw a bunch of spaces, and then CD raw again. Now if I want to go type type some backspaces, it only backspaces up to there. So I have no idea whether I'm CD rawing anymore or what. It's so confusing. I, I guess I wasn't there, but I don't know what I, what that was. So if I go see, if it's, it gets even worse if I want to go multiple levels deep, right? If I want to go raw defaults and then do it again, sheets, common, and then backspace again. I don't know what the hell's going on, man. Why does Z shell do these two different things? I need to do a fresh install. Hey, what's up, Boogie? Yes. Whoa, how'd you get all red like that? Oh, is that because you messaged right to me? Yeah. Huh. So Taiho, I did. I tried oh my Z shell, and I didn't. Uh, I was it was too much for me at first. I was like, this is way too confusing. So I, I installed oh my Z shell, and then I uninstalled oh my Z shell. So that might have had something to do with it. Really, it highlights for you. See, I okay. So I got the latest version of Z shell. Ah, cool. This is sweet, actually. Thanks, you guys. We're upgrading the chat like crazy good today. So uh, for people you just join in, I'm making some tiles where you'll be able to swing your sword and then it will remove the tile. So for example, imagine like a thicket or something like that. So you go up and you like a, attack a thicket or whatever and it temporarily recedes so you can go and cross over the thicket or whatever and then it grows back. A lot like Super Metroid where you get all those kind of tiles like that. So that's today's goal. So that, oh, here we go. We need idle. You spike seven. Yeah, okay, so we got, this isn't the graphics I want to use, but at least we have some, something for now, right? So the goal is to get these to recede when I hit them. That's the next thing. Yeah, but it, it didn't work that that easily for me. Yeah, I wish it was that easy, but it, it, it wasn't. It did 
there was a couple more things that it changed. Oh, you know what it changed? It was really horrible. Um, it changed my D. I have a special command called D, which gives me the the get the differences for a bunch of things, right? It just has a git diff, outputs it to a file, and then shows me those results. So it's my own custom bin command, right? And then that got overwritten by oh my Z shell. So I didn't like that about oh my Z shell that it added a bunch of different like aliases. And I think there was a way you could turn off all of its aliases, but it was too confusing for me at first to do all those new aliases. I'm like, dude, I don't want to have to learn about all these new aliases. But other than that, Z shell has been pretty cool so far. What are you talking about? Prepare for the exploits? Nice. You can set up different highlights on BTTV. Nice. Yeah, that's a, that's an idea that could work. Oh, is that how it works? You can change them in Z shut in there. Yeah, no, that wasn't it. That it's not an alias. It's like an actual command is linked, and yeah, I've already got that set up. So I set up my Z shell. So it would load my. Where the hell? Oh, no, no, it's in my Z, Z profile, right? My Z profile loads my existing profile, so it already has all the things that I would normally get out of my regular profile, right? So I've already got my path and all my aliases and everything's cool, but the D command is not an alias, it's an actual command. So I just didn't like how it installed an alias for me. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, I did brew install, so it's got the latest or whatever. Uh, all right, so let's start making this so we can kill these tiles, right? All I want to do is go over to um, this thing over here, swing the sword, kill it, and then it grows back. It should be pretty easy. So let's do it with the behavior. Um, if we... No, wait, how? I thought I could do it with the behavior, but it would have to be if... We have to do something if with the hit points. Oh, we need a health component first of all. Is that right? Health one. Oh yeah, health. Health one's fine. Mm-hmm. All right. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, the next thing would be to get these to be cre being created as entities. So they can be, well, we'll do like this. We'll go area, create beings. These are going to be beings. They're going to be alive. This being is going to be called grow back. Or just name. Uh, the position, P. Alive, true. Intelligence, difficulty. Random. Don't even need those really. Let's see what we got this time. Oh yeah. I hear you. Exploits in the game. I thought you were talking about exploits on BTTV or something. What's up, Felix? Welcome, man. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, nice. Oh, that time it did a reflection component for us automatically, too. That's pretty nice. Okay, so now we need a behavior installed so that when we attack it, 
It loses some hit points. By the way, for you guys that are joining, um, you can see visually the screen has a slight wander effect going on right now. So it moves up to a pixel very slowly in in different directions. So I want to get you guys' thoughts on see what that how does that seem to you guys? Does it seem natural? Can you tell that it's even going on? I can definitely tell because I can see a few pixels here and there that get stretched a little bit because it's all it's all pixel perfect. There's no there's no aliasing or blending going on for stretching. So that's why you can see these sort of like little bits of in and out going on. And I'm sure on a smaller resolution, this wouldn't even look good. So, you know, how does it look? What? I already got it. I already got D in the console. You like it? Okay. We got one vote for it. So you, okay. Lighter Thief? Yes, no? Uh, Alright, Quake style drop down console? That would actually be pretty cool. Like, yeah, let's, yeah, let's boost it. So make it a little bit more, um, more of an effect. Where does it do it? Ends Wander. Here it is. Oh, it already has its own strength or whatever. Max this. Okay, here. Max this. Let's put it to two. It's going to be twice the effect. Cool. Thanks for commenting, Dylan. So there's with two pixels. Let's make it even more. Let's make it even more and see what it looks like. That was two. Let's try eight. I mean, this. let's just amp it up until it's really noticeable. Two still kind of worked. One was barely, it was very nice and subtle. Oh, look, you can, you, it's not even, um, it's on the outside of the camera, so it's, it's, the bottom HUD is not staying with it. I just finally noticed that. Huh, yeah, I guess, I guess we'll keep it for now. I like it. Let's keep it in one, though. When is the 24-hour stream? I don't know, I don't know. Yo, Xbox Saga, what's up, man? Doc, how you doing, dude? How's it going, Doc? All right, so yeah, we'll keep that effect. That's a pretty cool effect. So next thing, um, all we gotta do is get the, get it so the, the growback tiles can be hurt by the sword. Yeah, a live coding. Ooh, boat. Whoops. Oh no, I ruined it again. But apparently I have bitter TV so I can fix this. Nice, nice. Oh man, copy. I ruined it, I ruined the chat. Yes, but more. Oh, okay. So far we got a yes, but more. Let me get the chat back. Body. There's got to be a better way to get the chat back. Wait, wait, wait. I think there is, right? If I go, if I make sure there's nothing, and then backspace. See, why doesn't backspace work? Oh, wait. Ah, well. I broke the chat, sorry. Sorry again. 
Breaking the chat every day. What's all? What's this? Pop out. Pop, pop out before he starts talking. Pop out before he starts talking. It's gonna be echoed. That's so great that it has the history, man. <laughs> Amp it up until we want to vomit. Let's okay. Let's try it. Let's try it. All right. I think what it needed was actually to be faster to be able to be no more noticeable. So this is where it multiplied the vector times 0.5. Let's multiply it by two. That should increase its speed. Man, just having the, the chat history is one of the best things so far. Yeah, so there you go. There's there's a lot faster movement. Of course, you know, if I'm gonna stick with this effect, I would fix the HUD so the HUD would actually stay constant. I'm not sure why the HUD isn't staying constant. It's kind of weird. Probably just needs another layer in there or something. So what do I think of it, huh? Is that too much? Wandering lens camera effect. I mean, if the HUD was there, if the HUD didn't move, that would really help. Hmm. It's the chat's winning. <laughs> the chat was winning, right? Too fast, too far, yeah. Let's keep it at one then, and we'll try a max dist of two this time. Yeah, definitely too much. All right, so there, this is a uh, half as slow or half as fast. Yeah, half as fast and half the distance. Hmm. I like I, I kinda like it. It almost looks like the screen is breathing. Oh, good idea, Graga. Yeah, so it doesn't move while the action is going on. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Very good idea. You think it's too fast now, huh? It's a <laughs> It's this subtle effect which is moving the camera slightly and barely. Right? It's almost as if it's almost as if as if a god is using a camera to film it. And the god is having a slight, like, you know, he's breathing. The god is, the god which is viewing all this is breathing. Yeah, let's try a little f slower movement. So before it was 0 0.5, and I think it was a little too slow. So let's try 0 0.75, a little compromise of those two extremes there. Yeah, well, it's going to be, it's still going to be kind of subtle, but if you pay attention, and to kind of look at the screen, just maybe maybe blur your eyes or something, I don't know. Not bad, not bad. Alright, I wonder how we can get this the switches already work this way where you can hit them and they activate. But these are already being activated and stuff. Nice, right on. Yeah, cache it, this is a good idea. And another thing I need to, I wanna add to the options is having it so there's no uh, reduced um, flashing of the screen. So if anybody has any kind of sensitivity, 
you know, to light or, you know, you know, like they have a sensitivity to perhaps having seizures or whatever. There needs to be an option so it doesn't do as many flashes on the screen. So I like that. Let's um, we'll add these two little options, right? You're saying faster? And we just tried that. You see it now. You say you say faster, we got more more votes for faster. What's up, Kofez? Oh my god, this is only part of the to-do list. Look at this. This is like way too long. This is the actual these are actual bugs right here. These are confirmed things that need to change in the game. These are ideas that are sort of more optional. But hell, I don't even like looking at this list. It freaks me out. I got freaked out right there just, just, just looking at it. Oh, I got rid of my... I got rid of these little icons things. I don't want these icons. Oh, there's a ban button right here. This is actually kind of handy for the when the bots come in. All right, so the way um, switches work is they get they get changed in the change HP I think of the health system. Here it is, and there's something where it uses the switch. Hmm. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this early access thing. I think it's kind of a bad idea. <laughs> I know it's kind of handy, right? How do I get rid of this if I can? I don't see any way to get rid of it. Is it way? Maybe it's a Frank Franker faces thing. Franker phases? Is this you? Minimalistic chat? Hey, check this out. It's kind of cool, actually. Why did I just able to stream up time? What was that? Is that nice? Sorry. Where was that I got again? Basic. Mm, if only I could get rid of those. Chat moderation has got to be it, right? Well, maybe it is a BTTV thing. I don't know. I don't know. It's good enough for now. Okay. Let me remember how the hell those those switches worked. It was in something in K filter. K filter, ground, static, water, sky, neutral, friend, foe, item. I think it was item. No, it was switch. Co uh, Kofez, uh, well, I think in Visual Studio there's some settings, right? Maybe somebody, somebody else can help out and like, if anybody knows, but um, yeah, Visual Studio is 
there's got to be a way to make it faster. I don't know. I've got things. I've got some settings. I'm really familiar with Xcode, so I made sure that it's all the settings are make it really really fast for building. One of the things that really helped it build faster is turning off D Sims. Where the hell was that? D Sim. Yeah, yeah. So check this out. When I'm in debug mode, it only compiles the dwarf debug instead of the whole dsim. Creating a dsim file takes a while. So you might want to play around with Visual Studio and see what you can do to make it faster for you. I'm sure there's something you can you can some settings there. Yeah, is that what it is? Nice. Because Windows. Yeah, 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 it's true. I like it. I like that. You're still raw. Yeah, here's how it creates one of these old switches with a K filter switch. But how does it respond? There's. Um... Yeah, this doesn't do anything. This doesn't affect any systems. So K filter item maybe. Oh, uh, that would be for picking up an item or something. And then this is just when you create an item, check for contact with an item. Yeah, we don't want the item. Hmm. Yeah, learn make first. You are, you're raw, man. Yeah. Oh, you, you do, do you use a GUI? Really, what do you need a GUI for? Hmm. Okay, so the goal. Let me let me just restate the goal for right now. I'm trying to figure out how to make how, what the be, what the best way is to make these kind of tiles disappear. So, this is not artistically how I want it to look just yet, but I'm imagining like a thicket or something like that, a tiny little bramble of thorns. You swing your sword; it gets rid of the thorns. After a few seconds, the thorns grow back. They're like a hyperactive alien plant, or maybe even an alien be being or something like that. So you just can get rid of them temporarily or with bombs you can set bombs to do the same thing or maybe even your hat I'm not sure so that's the goal for right now <laughs> yeah yo that's all you need to say understood so uh I think this could be done with the behavior, actually. Oh, you know what? We can show this thing's hit points. This is a being. Yeah, it's there. We got four hit points for these. Oh my god, this new debug is so nice. So now all you gotta do is just be able to get these things so they can be hurt. Static, of course, would do nothing. So maybe this needs to be something like switch. And then the player can hit it. The hat! Yeah, it worked! Nice! They're all at zero. They're like, man, we got hurt. Alright! Yes, yeah, you're on the right track. There you go. I think this could be done all the way in the behavior. So if sequence remove timer, no, we have no remove timer. Timer end, if timer is, let's start over here. 
sequence. If we've been hurt, we want to shrink. So if HP, I've got the, I, let me look at this other, um, like for example, the drops boss uses this HP thing. I need to create some kind of like documentation. This is getting a little bit unwieldy, having so many different types of, it was basically my own scripting language for doing AI trees. If target, if HP, where's HP? If HP, there, if HP is less than, we do something. Okay, so if HP is less than a third or half even, then we're going to shrink away. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Well, we can try animating the shrink at least, and also setting the category to be none, I guess. And we'll set a timer of, let's grow, have it grow back after three seconds, let's say. And then we'll do sequence grow. If timer end, animate grow, category switch, and we need to set the HP back. So I think we can just go HP. I don't know, we might need to check that. I'm not sure if this is a command yet, HP, but I want the hit points to be back to 100%. So let's figure that out. Let's see, see, see if we got the HP command in the system for running AI. Uh, not story system, AI system, yeah. Behave. Behave. What's up, True Sandwich? <laughs> It's not if, it's just behavior HP, right? Did I already do this? Did I hook these words up? Yeah, so it is K behavior HP. So I really need to look for in system is K behavior HP. It's already there. This is testing if it is, aha. Yes, it does have a HP. And this, okay, so 1.0 will work. That's not re restoring 100% of health, but it is doing one whole hit point, which is enough. This might work. Ah, wait, what's a fake sandwich? Great question. Oh no, it lost its hit points already. Probably because it ran that all, ran that. Let's see, you can turn on, um, this is so great having this new debug overlay. So I can press this debug button once and I get this where it shows like, you know, basically all the collision boxes and stuff like that. I press it again and I get a little bit more details. Current tick, frames per second, cameras, hit points of active objects. And then I, I do it one more time and I get all the details of behaviors for every single kind of AI. And then one final time and it turns it all off. So that's so handy. And the other handy thing, if you guys haven't seen this so far, is the ability to change time. So I can slow it way down and see exactly what's going on with an animation. It even slows down everything, even like opening up the, the gear window, you know? So super nice debug things. 
How would I? It's already been ported to Windows, and Linux is really easy too. Coco Studio X is already a cross-platform game engine. So all I do is I compile all of my game code, or write all my game code in C++, and then all I need are a few different files, like main.cpp, maybe a different, few different services files to get things started on another platform. So I've already got, this is the Windows version right here, it's just a couple files and projects. The Mac version is its own thing, iOS, Android, these are all just basically project files. And then, and then all of those use all of the game's one single source code base, so it's pretty easy to do the basic ports like that. <laughs> and it, yeah, and true. Right, it's e it's easy in theory, but it takes a lot of testing work on all every single individual platform. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's like that for me on Windows. I make I make the game mostly in Mac, and then I go to Windows and check if it works, and it's just it's like it's kind of like pulling my hair out every day every day because everything doesn't work all of a sudden. Which, you know, it's not necessarily Windows' fault or a different platform's fault. It's just that you're not as familiar. I'm not as familiar with that platform. So. Okay, so the problem with that is that this second sequence, this grow sequence, if timer end. Oh, I got it. Let's make it so it tests at the hit points as well. All right. Why are we still missing hit points? Oh, because it's a different kind of entity now. It has a behavior. Oh, oh, oh. see that sequence shrink? So it did do the sequence shrink, but it didn't animate it correctly. Right, dude. You should you consider Okay, we'll see that one more time. Oh, it brought two. Did I let mine fly? Fly, let it fly, little one. So they never grew back. They never ran this second grow. If the hit points, if timer end. I wonder why that never ran. Yeah, 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 got those. It's WizJib with the underscore or with under lowercase w. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. No, capital J, capital J, man. You can you can copy paste these. Uh uh. -huh. Okay, first of all, we can get the shrink to work. It should be the shrink should be go from 
seven, six, five, four. Yeah, it should be reversed. But it didn't work either. Why is that? The profile, I'm pretty sure reverse is a, it can be an integer, right? Profile or reverse. Get int. Yeah, that's fine. Hmm, wait a minute, can we even walk across them? There you go, Extreme, you got it, man. Oh yeah, you can, you can walk across these. They sure don't want to grow back. Apple watches the stream? No, they can't. There's no way. I don't know, I don't know. Can you undo it? Taiho, is that what it is? No, it shouldn't be. See, it's not even doing the shrink part. I'm not sure which one to, cap to focus on first, but if I count that out or whatever, it should still be broken. Yeah, still broken. Okay, something that would really help though in debugging this would be to know where it's at in its timer, if it has a timer. So I'm gonna do that. Inside the system for running behaviors, it's gonna update the entity <laughs> oh, you can't. Ch That's weird. Yeah, this is a, this is pretty big, right? This is just a this is just the tip of the iceberg for this function. This is a big old function. It runs behaviors, so every one of these is like a separate kind of behavior. But yeah, okay. So I would need to to set some kind of I would. Need to make an AI component be able to remember the last sequence that it ran so that it could set the label. I guess that's fine. I can just give AI components a last. Last behavior name. <laughs> Last behavior, I guess that works. So it just starts empty. No, no, I got a better name than last behavior. It should just be label, string label. This is a debug thing. Label makes it clear this is a debug.
All right, so here's what we'll actually set the debug label for this entity. And this is only if, oh wait, we need to create a draw debug if verbosity. Ah. This is on a per entity basis, bool draw debug. If basically if it's a foe or if verbosity is really high, it enables this. So if draw debug, I guess we can just make this if. It's not like we're gonna reuse that. Set the label. So I don't need to see the sequence versus select. I don't need to see dur and tar anymore really either. But maybe maybe we want to see the timer. So if the aid I add a timer is I guess we'll store the, the the timer before. So double timer before equals e dot ai dot timer. And there, if yeah e dot ai dot timer is not equal to before timer, then we'll do a nice debug output label with that and its timer. So we'll do percent point one f the e dot ai dot label. <laughs> yeah, no, it's of someone vacuuming next door. Yeah. We got a ton of like road work going on right now. It's not working. Oh, that one's cool. I love the sloth. I just watched I watched the whole documentary on sloths recently, so I kind of like them. I got a special place in my heart. Float. Oh, this is timer before. <laughs> Snake eater. Okay, so this is not going to fix the problem with the, the grow back blocks, but it will at least help fix. Really? Oh my god, I didn't know that. They did they they failed to mention that in the documentary. It's kind of an important thing, right? Okay, so now we just got a 0, 0.0. .0. Shrink, yay, look, the timer's running. Okay, there's the problem, it's counting, why is it counting upwards? It's supposed to be counting downwards.
Valware, what's up, man? Yeah, quick update. What's happened since the beta? Uh, yeah, this the alpha version was a couple weeks ago. Lots of uh, lower level engine stuff I've been working on. So the get the camera zooms a lot better. For example, there's all these new debug features I got. So hopefully this will make me be able to debug the game faster next time. Because if dude, if you look at my bug list, you'll be you'll freak out. So there's this little thing where I can turn on debug view in the game. Before this was a switch I had to set outside the game and then rerun the game. So this is way faster. And then there's all these toggles so I can toggle on more info. There's slow motion so I can go and take a really good look at animations. You know? Um, there's diagonal movement so you can move diagonally. You can turn. See that? You can turn from side to side. Uh, there's four buttons. So there's A, B, X, and Y. So I can bind like cactus to X and the bio detector to Y. And I can use all those items. I got the sword, the top hat, the cactus, and the freaking map all in one. So, yeah. And that's all from feedback from the alpha version. That's all from people playing it and going, hey, why don't you add diagonal movement? Actually turned out to be a really good move to add diagonal movement. It's awesome. <laughs> Nothing's happened. Yeah, right on, man. Yeah, I know what you mean. When you talk about Xcode, it, actually, especially when I start talking about Windows versus Mac, there are some people that always get pissed off. I don't know what it is. I don't know why people are so defensive about what platform they develop on. I'm not defensive, so thank you for um, thanks for mentioning that. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're you like that too, man. This is what I prefer to develop in. Xcode is really friendly. Macs are really friendly for development. But that's also an individual thing, you know, it's what you prefer to each their own. Yeah, totally. Right, isn't it? That's so good. I'm like, yeah, that's another new thing too, since the bit since the alpha version. I've upgraded my streaming software. So I'm using this thing called Game Show. It does charge per month, but um it's actually really way better quality than Open Broadcaster was. No matter what I tried, I couldn't get Open Broadcaster, at least on the Mac, to work for, to work well, basically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is BSD close enough? Nope, it's it's not. Not for our core. Okay, so that's a big revelation, right? That the um the counters were counting upwards. They're supposed to count downwards. Why was why are they counting upwards? It doesn't make sense. So look at this. If e dot timer is greater than or equal to zero, then count downwards. Minus equals delta. Delta should not be negative. Is delta negative? Did I mess what did I do? Did I Oh, look at this. Here's a problem. That was a freaking bug waiting to happen right there. Windows would have crashed. Sorry, I'm, I'm talking about Windows and Mac again. I don't mean to incite war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Right on. Oh, it's too warp. Yeah, Vim's nice, right? I'm still getting used to Vim. But I have I did make the switch during this project, right? Oh, I'm so good at Vim. Look at this, look at this. Up, down, left, right. So actually what um what got me to start using Vim was actually changing my keys in the game. Just rebound them. So I'm I'm a, I'm an expert with JK, L, and H. Yeah, if the dog runs Linux. 
Yeah, that's what I got. I got a MacBook Pro. I just reboot into Windows with Boot Camp. I heard though that um, I heard Virtual Box actually um, has OpenGL support now though, so maybe that you don't have to reboot anymore. Yeah, Vim Master Race for sure. I, I do intend to one day switch all the way to Vim so I can use the Vim plugin for Xcode even. Let's see what we got now. Yeah, all right, we got a blank. Hit them, shrink. Oh, why are they counting up again? Upwards. Hmm. Okay, this is very revealing. Obviously, something is totally wrong here. Oh. Oh, I think I know what it might be. And maybe it's running the same behavior many times. Right? It could be going shrink, 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 shrink. Always increasing the timer. Oh, duh. That's what it is. We want if timer. Is less than zero. Uh, I use Ableton for making music. There we go. Oh, it keeps on shrinking over and over. Okay, so next, good. That's one step closer to it working. You use Audition in Ableton? Ubuntu. <laughs> yes. What's up, blood? Uh, what happened to my chat window? Um, I got BTTV, and I tried the dark theme on um, Franker Faces today. I wish I could get rid of these these timeout and ban icons though. It's kind of bugging me. I'd rather just see a nice, simple, clean chat window. If anybody knows how to disable the ban and timeout easy, quick access icons, please let me know. Yeah, that's a right. It begs the question: Why didn't they just use a Linux backend? Oh, 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 okay, I see what's going on. The grow sequence needs the chance to run first because it's, it needs to reset the hit points. So I think that might work this time. It seems the mat lag is lower, that'd be cool. Maybe it is, maybe the, maybe BTTV fixed the chat to run faster. I would, I'd believe it. So far it's done some amazing things. Grow, it grew, it grew back. Check it, check it, it's kind of working, except for the animation. What was that? Why did it slow down all of a sudden? Oh, something's going on. That's something. Yeah, look at that. Total bug. Oh, oh, you know what? It might be running that over and over and over, like... Look at that, it just killed my frame rate too. Wait, we're running at 40. Yeah, 45 is my max right now, but I think. No, we didn't kill the frame rate. What if I slow down? Oh, I know what it is. There's a sleep. 
There's a sleep inside when you hit stuff. So it's got to be that. It's in this. It's in the system when it changes hit points. It's gonna be health system change HP. Can I never find the methods I need? Change HP. No shake. No shake. Dude, so such a good question. I don't know. I don't know how the hell to keep art organized. I've reorganized it several times. I got art organized in two different ways, I guess. I got a I got a raw I got this raw folder for all my art, and then I got a sheets folder full of all the exported sprite sheets. I got a sprites, which is the original sprites. And then this what's the problem is the sheets are in a different format than the, the sprites right now. So I don't know. I guess just develop your own system for it and try and be as organized as possible. But my folders are looking is you know ugly as well. It kind of sucks having multiple folders because then you for, sometimes forget which folder you put something in, and then you got to go find it. So I don't know. Maybe you should put everything in one folder. Consider that. Yeah, I wish. Yeah. Mm hmm Is that what it is? Enhanced moderation cards? Is that BTTV or is that Frank or Face? It's probably BTTV, huh? Oh no, but how do I get back to BTTV settings? So Safari preference? It's Franker face under basic? Oh. See it says disabled due to incompatibility with better TTV. So I think BTTV is the one doing it. See if we can get to the preferences for BTTV. Oh, I don't know. PMC, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Oh, well, I'm going to go do the thing I know that I can do well code. I can code, man. I don't know if I can figure out BTTV, but I can code. <laughs> you can just ban us all. <laughs> Do I have a blue robe? No, but I need one. Because this guy is freaking awesome, right? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm not actually going to ban anybody. The only people I ban are bots, but not sky bots. If you're, if you're like Jib, you're fine. You're good to go. You can stay, you can say whatever you want. Say annoying stuff, post links, talking gibberish, no problem. Yeah. Okay, filter switch. Right? We're still with filter switch, is that right? Yeah, is that is that how to do it? Oh, right, yeah, if I start it over. <laughs> yes, nice, nice, good example. <laughs> all right, all right. Blue robes it is.
Man, I'm kind of excited about consoles all of a sudden. I mean, I've been I've been researching them like crazy the last week. Like, okay, am I actually gonna get this game on PlayStation? You know? Hey, look, it kind of worked for for a second. Oh yeah, and it didn't it didn't sleep the screen. Yeah, PMC, you need uh, Franker faces. Oh right, yeah, you don't want to. It's cool. It's cool. What's in my way to bring it to PlayStation? Um, it's first of all, it's the time involved in creating another port. So Coco Studio X said they were going to be, I don't know if they officially committed to it, but they were like, yeah, we're going to add PlayStation support and Xbox support to the Coco Studio X game engine. But now I don't think they are. So it's a nut, it's, you have to basically port your game. It's some work. Like it would probably take me a month or two just working on a single platform like PlayStation to get it working and get it ready for, for, for release. And then secondly, what that all means for the project overall, for this game overall, is that you have to commit to a certain day as well as when you're going to release. So Sony needs a heads up as, as far in advance as they possibly can. We're talking like six months if possible. You need to tell Sony like, hey, I'm going to be releasing my game on your platform six months from now. And let's start planning a day for that, you know, because they, they highlight certain games that come out and stuff and they'll work with you. I guess if you're if your game's good or whatever, I don't know how that how that works exactly, but um, so it's a it's a lot of work and planning, and not all of that is creative work, so it could get boring and stressful to release to another platform. So that's kind of why I'm considering using a company, and there's there's two companies um, that I know of that do it. So if there's but if anybody else knows any other companies, that'd be really nice to know. Um, but there's, uh, there's double 11 and then there's also, uh, Blitworks and I've already been in contact with double 11 and they seem like really, really cool people. I could see myself actually going with them. So they, what they would do is they would port it for me. They would port the, port it to PlayStation three and four, port it to Xbox 360 and Xbox one. They port it to Wii U. They'd even do Android. Um, so they seem like a cool company. Um, and then Blitworks, I wanted to get in touch with them just to see what their deal was, but I haven't really got, I haven't got anybody to write me back. So I don't know what kind of company these guys are or what, but they seem cool too. You know, they've done some, they've done some famous games and stuff. So, the, you know, so the, so the deal in my mind is, okay, do I commit to working with a company like this or do I maybe try and squeeze out one platform myself alone? And if I did try and do one more platform, I would probably need another two months at least to release the game on time. So I would I would need more funding, or I would have to get some you know some money from somewhere to be able to survive against, uh, past like January. Basically, the Kickstarter funds are out in December. So that sorry for a long answer to your question there, but this is a really really big thing on my mind with consoles and how that affects the whole game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, if anybody has any thoughts on that, you know, I'd love to get through your guys' thoughts because it's, it's nice to have some, some feedback from, you know, from outside of my own brain or whatever. So, I want to make this game as cool as possible, first of all. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me whether how many platforms it gets on, as long as it's a dope game. But... That said, it would be really kind of nice to have it on, at least on PlayStation. I know, I probably should open a Patreon, right? Yeah. I keep looking at that, and then I don't do it. That's one option. That's definitely an option, right, of getting more funds. Yeah. 
Yeah, Boogie, so the so that's a good question, right? Is there really a problem with releasing later on consoles than you do on PC? Um, and I've heard I've heard both sides of the 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 coin there. How much does it cost one of those companies to port the game? We're talking about fifty, at least fifty grand, fifty thousand dollars just to do one platform, and that's no, I, is that that might be wrong? Let me think about this. No, it's more like twenty to thirty thousand dollars minimum per platform, and that's counting one programmer doing most of the porting for a month and another programmer as well doing the other half of the ports, which can be, you know, like one person's doing input graphics, sound, another person's doing achievements and testing input and testing and testing, and testing. So two developers working for an entire month could probably knock out one port. And so that's, you're looking at like 20 grand right there. And then, you know, there's a lot of other licensing fees and things like that. So that can add up. So we're talking probably 20 to 30 grand per platform. You're thinking doing a late release for consoles. See, I've heard both sides of the coin here. I don't know what to think. They won't wait for a patch, yeah. See, okay, so the argument that I've heard is that you need to have your PC version and your console version at exactly the same release date because you're gonna get this buzz, right? You're gonna get the buzz created from from you know all of your marketing efforts. It's better to just put all your marketing efforts into one day so that when it comes out, people are aware of the game and they can purchase it on whatever platform they prefer. You know, if people want to play it on Steam, great. If people want to play it on PlayStation, that's great. So you, I guess there is kind of a pretty, you know, that's kind of makes sense, right? That you would you would release it one in one date so you get the maximum out of the, your marketing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's just one platform. And we're not talking about licensing fees either. So some platforms can be, you know, 20 grand just to put just to pay Sony or whatever. I'm not I'm I'm not saying it's it is Sony or whatever, but paying whatever Microsoft, Sony, whatever, you have to pay them another like 10 or 20 grand on top of that just to be able to release on whatever platform that is. It depends. Totally depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. I'm 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 on this side of the fence right here of of either using a company or not even porting to consoles. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good thoughts, you guys. I'm still listening too. If anybody else has any more thoughts, I'm I'm all ears. To console or oh, not to console. This is the question. May I consult with you about consoles? If I had a long beard, that would, that would have been way cooler, right? Okay, um, let's see what... Okay, so there's this... They shrink, and then they pop back up. Oh, because... Ah, I know what to do here. The grow back needs a zero on the end. Of its animate. Anime grow zero. Yeah, you do need the Sony dev kit, but I've heard that Sony is a little bit better about giving out free loaner dev kits to indies. So you sign up with Sony's PlayStation developer program. Usually they'll they'll send you a loaner for free and you get to keep the loaner kit for a year. And like I think it doesn't cost anything. Uh, Sergeant Seb, this this is a good question right here. Very intelligent question to ask. Um, do you release all platforms at the same price, even mobile, tablet? And the answer is pretty much no. iOS and Android, you can't get what your what your game's worth. So, this game is you know on on Steam and everything. And on Steam, for example, this game is probably worth fifteen to twenty bucks. You know, it's going to be a full length game, lots of replayability. So it's going to be worth that 15 or 20 bucks. But on mobile, people will pay no more than 3 to $5, like maximum. And that's from talking to you guys and also talking to people in the industry. It's just like you, you just can't get, you can't get what a game's worth on mobile. It really, really sucks. But that's just reality. Yeah, Boogie, I think you might have to pay them per update. I'm not sure on the details of that. Yeah. 
I will. I'm taking mental notes, man. Trust me. This is a very, very uh, important stuff. What's up? Why not? Yeah. Okay, so is it very portable? Probably better better portability than most than most some games. You know what I mean? It's already it's already got nice localization going on, you know, all the text is localized. That's a big thing. Um, it's already using a cross-platform engine. That's another big thing for porting. It's also using an open source engine, so that also is really, really helpful when you're porting. Um, but have I ever ported myself once? I guess so. I mean, I've, got, I've done Mac and Windows, and I've already got an iOS version running. So, but not really. No, I've never done a console. So I don't, I don't actually know all this stuff about consoles. Your vote is not to console yet. All right. Hmm. Yeah. So you don't recommend porting to the Wii U, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only, okay, so not only is it that, that they don't really care for indies, you don't get much support on Wii U, but I've heard that the games don't even sell very well on Wii U. So like, if you write an indie game, it's almost like there's this attitude on Wii U that all your indie games have to be free or they eventually go free or something like that. I don't I don't have a Wii U, so I'm not sure. Yeah, this is this has the, been the plan the whole time, right? Start with PC for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. But you can, you can still do that today. You can release your game on both PS3 and PS4. Yeah, I think it is very low. Yeah, it's very, very... Not many people have the Wii U. But I think the Wii, the Wii was a lot more popular, right? It's just the Wii U is, is the one in the tank or... Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's up, Caleb? Welcome to the stream, man. Hmm, it didn't stick. Okay, there's something I can do to make an animation sticky. What's that thing that runs an animation once and then it stays? Oh, the the um, the, what are these guys called? Zerub, the Zerub guys do it. They run animate unburrow, burrow, animate burrow zero. It's supposed to stick. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not, it, this is totally true. This game is not really Wii friendly. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, so why didn't that work? It should have gone animate, grow, and the zero should have stopped it at the very end. Oh, duh. It was the shrink, not the grow. Slow. It's always so slow for me to do these behavior trees. But in the end, I like having behavior trees because there's so less, so much less code. There, they stayed down. Hmm, I wonder why they. So it never, it never allowed, hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a good thought. It's a good thought. This is my intention all along, right? I was always thinking, okay, I'll release on, on Steam first, Windows, Mac, and Linux, and then um, wait a few months, and then 
you know, and then get in the get in the headspace of maybe doing PlayStation retro VGS and maybe Xbox One. But it, I don't know Xbox One. I'm kind of iffy on because Xbox One is not very friendly for indies as well. Xbox 360 is still kind of popular. What Microsoft needs to do is they need to bring back XBLA. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Really? Oh, okay. Good to know. Super Meat. Okay. I need to check out Super Meat Boy, how they did consoles. I know they used, they used Blitworks. They, uh, they used a porting company. Terry, do you mind if I ask how much money has been spent on this game? Not at all, man. It's all, it's all thanks to the Kickstarter. So the Kickstarter project raised like 15 grand, but I really only got 11 out of that. But anyways, uh, yeah, here's the, here's this Kickstarter. You can see the game did, or the project made, you know, 15 grand on Kickstarter and that's how it got funded. So the Kickstarter funds run out in, um, in December. So sometime in basically in January, I need to have some other kind of solution. Either I need a Patreon page or I need some other funding or I do a second, second round of crowdfunding. I don't know. You know, this is like, cause I, I need to at least get to March to be able to make this game as good as I, as good as it can be, you know, at least March, June would actually be even more preferable than that. Actually, was it? I thought I thought Binding of Isaac was the Flash game at first, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Good to know. Okay, so for something's going on now where I hit it and it all it does afterwards is grow. Hmm, it needs a delay here. Both of these can use a delay actually. Delay, let's try that out now. Hmm, wow. Oh, it was a flash game at first, wow, I never knew that. No, no, definitely not a personal one. Oh, you didn't know if the question was a personal one. Oh, all right, cool. Um, all right. Okay, let's see what happens this time. We hit it, shrinks. They're down, they grow back, and we, oh, we kept on growing back twice there. Hey, no, wait. Man, I wish there was an easier way to debug these. Flood had a good idea of doing, so what's that called? Metacode? How much does developing the game for a month cost me? I can barely make it by on 1500 bucks a month. So that's where I did it. That's where I get all that math from on the Kickstarter. And, um, and for going forwards, right? I need at least 1500 bucks a month to just do bare bones. Like that's just, you know, roof over my head and food. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I definitely don't intend to try and duplicate anyone else's success. There's no such thing. So, you know, you, you got to make your own success, I believe. And that's, you know, but it's going well. It's going well so far with this game. Wow, I didn't know Cashel Crashers started as a Flash game. Freakonomics, I've heard of that. The hidden side of everything. Yeah, there's no recipe. 
through. If anybody's watching the stream, you're like, hey, what's the recipe for making a successful game? There's no recipe. There's no recipe. You got to create. Be a creator. Be creative. Be creative with all what you do. And you just do it in your own way. That's the only way that can be done, really. In my humble opinion. Wow. There's a book about cheating teachers, bizarre baby names, and crack selling mama's boys. Wow, I should check this out. Freakonomics. Mm hmm. Ah. Yeah, commitment, patience, creativity. Yeah, these are all these are all components. Oh, the indie game movie. Yeah, that was a good good show. You guys seen that one? Definitely worth watching. Yeah, actually, Minecraft was the second kind of game like it. Right? There was another game before Minecraft, which looked exactly like it. Minecraft kind of, I don't know, I guess you could say Minecraft ripped them off. I'm not sure if that's true or not. I'm not claiming that it is. I'm just saying that, I don't know. Is There There was an article that somebody wrote about that, though. That, so maybe there's some better evidence or whatever. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is dial in, get these animations so this runs smoothly. Was that what's it's called? Infinity Miner? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so they discontinued it. Oh, that's right. Hmm. He just discontinued it because it was hacked? Oh, man. Yeah, it looks like they, they it was self-canceled. Hmm. Yeah, take a look for sure. Okay, so what's the, I gotta identify that there's two problems I think is still going on with this. Let's identify the problems and solve them one at a time. Shrinks, timer runs well, everything looks good, it grows back, but it grows back twice. Why does he grow back twice? Probably because it runs this twice. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, you showed me that. Everything is a remix. Yeah, I watched that. That was a great video. If anybody's, yeah, if anybody's on this sort of thread right now in your mind, check this out. Everything is a remix. It's a pretty cool video thingy. Yeah, true, true. Moral of the story, don't give up before you're finished. Don't cancel your game a month after it's released just because somebody hacks it. Cool, right on. Yeah, I like these. Thank you, man. Thanks for sharing these. There's a lot you can learn from someone else's failure. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe this game did fail. And maybe he worked on it a long time or whatever. But it's really good to take note of what they learned through the process. So I'm really glad that he shared, his pro shared this. I'm definitely going to check this out later on, read this article, see what I can learn, you know? 
Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tyho said HP one after delay one. No, these are these run in, these run simultaneously. Yeah, um, I think what's happening is it's calling grow more than once. Ooh, ooh, ooh! I got a better idea. I got a good idea that will help debugging later. So every time it runs the same sequence, I'm gonna make it so it adds a adds a number to the end. Yeah, so in um, AI system behave goes into behavior, running behavior, it sets the label here. Yeah, set label. We'll make a little set label method so we can, yeah, we'll make it can even be a, even be one of these. So we'll set the label. String ref probably is fine. Oh, no worries, man. <laughs> you dirty coders, dirty coders. Okay, so I'm basically going to add a counter variable to this so we can see if a if a sequence runs twice, it'll have a number two at the end. All right, so if e dot ai dot label, oh, we need the we need the e. To label dot find stir not equal to string and pause. So if we find this substring, we're going to need to add on a number. Well, we need to store this pause. This will be really good for later. Next time I won't have to work so hard trying to debug a, a tiny little AI like this. <laughs> yes, you're a dear decoder. Notepad minus minus plus plus minus minus. <laughs> uh. Notepad Morse code. It does. What? So yeah, we'll get the stir to L of Is that right? No, that's not right. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'm going to try and I'm going to decode the number on the end of the string. We'll set up a string stream so we can output to it. If pause is less than stir dot size, then we can pick off the number from the end. We can start the whole string with stir. And 
And so we'll append on this other string, even though this is the wrong code so far. You probably can. Erlicht is really great in 3D, right? Mm hmm. What's that function to get the buffer for a string? I thought it was RD buff. Oh yeah, you can just do this. This works. Yeah, it's perfectly valid and safe to do that. Oh, stir that seaster. Duh, seaster plus pause. Yeah. And then otherwise, we're just gonna output two. And then e.i.i e to label equals this as that stir. Right? Okay, now we're ready to set try this out. Shaders. Shaders are amazing. I know what you mean though. They can be intimidating at first when you don't really haven't used them yet. They can be very intimidating because man, they, they actually are. They're kind of hard to use at first. But once you get the hang of them, they're some of the most powerful graphically, you know, some of the most powerful things you can do. You can, you can make your game look sick, basically. See what we got this time. Shrink. Grow. Grow zero. Grow zero. Why does it still grow zero? Okay, let's hit the let's hit these breakpoints so we can see. Set a breakpoint in here. We can figure out what's going on. Nice man. Oh, we do not need to be doing this if verbosity is. is off. Oh, wow, I didn't know about this one. Nice, man. Nice link. Open.gl. Cool. Open.gl. Nice. I'll remember that for later.
All right, let's see that again. <laughs> Good for you, bud. Oh, it's not that hard. It's not that hard, man. Yeah. Engines like Erlix have their own software renderers. Okay, so what is this we have already? We have stirs, rechews, the entity's current label is rechews. Pause, what's the pause? Pause is zero? That makes complete sense. Oh. Okay, so we need to add to the pause. So pause plus equals third on size. Well, that's of course not gonna work. Oh, oh, if pause plus stir dot stop. Well, yeah, we can do this. We just go pause plus equals stir dot size. And then if pause, no, if. Yeah, yeah. If pause is less than e dot label, e dot ai dot label dot size. There. Uh, I mean, it depends. It depends, right? Yeah. Yeah, nice. It can be very fun and satisfying and rewarding, too, to create your own engines. But it's time consuming. Mm. Nice. Okay, so this time, uh, uh, labels rechoose, strings rechoose, pause is now eight, which would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. So pause is let. Nope. We're adding on two. Great. Let's see what happens next time. This is called bounce, rechews, hop, hop, hop two. Great. This is a great one to check out. So we got hop two is the label existing. We want this to become hop three. So we need to read that two from the end of the string. Um, pause three, which is, yeah, right at the end of the string. Oh, oh man, man. Okay, there's a bug. This is supposed to be the label. All right, let's try this one more time. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do the art for this today. I don't, I don't want these to actually look like spikes right here. The whole point is to create a grow back tile. So this should be something that grows, 
like an organic entity or maybe you know like a some you know bush or tree or something wait okay all right what do we got here this time rechoose rechoose two great i'll take it we got a pause of eight yeah, thorn bushes, exactly, something like that. You knock them back for a second and they grow back. It's gonna be kind of interesting. They'll be able to do, we'll be able to create puzzles this way in the game. And just sort of cover stuff up too. Like you can put hidden items maybe inside these things or, and it also acts as a gateway. So the player gets the sword or any kind of weapon and they can fight through these things to get to places where they couldn't without the sword or without the bombs or whatever. Okay, pause is eight. I think that's gonna work there with that SS. Hmm, it didn't work. Oh, oh duh, because we need to add one. I think that's, I think it's ready to go. So yeah, sorry sorry for bearing with me today on today's Mostly Code Day. I was intending to do some art today, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time. But at least the code part's pretty much there. So the behavior of this little grow back entity is all pretty much done. So I do need to create some better art and finish up the code. Wait. Grow, grow two, see? Now I know that it did call that sequence twice. And look at this, this guy's on hop 8, hop 9, hop 10, hop 11, hop 12. So what happens if I go over here and run this again? See, grow 3, grow 4. It's just grow 5. It ran it 3 times that time. Oh, that's really handy. Just to know that. And it's that only runs in debug mode too, so it's not ever using any kind of resources that it shouldn't be, so. It's really good. All right. <clears throat> oh, crap. I broke the chat again. Backspace doesn't work, man. Oh. Oh. Pop out, pop out, pop out. I can't pop it out. Oh no, I can't pop out the chat anymore. Yeah, me while coding. Oh, this will work 100% guaranteed. Test code doesn't work. Code some more. Oh, this will work 100% guaranteed. Oh, yeah. Me too. Me too. I know. It doesn't work. It doesn't freaking work. I don't know why. I wasn't on any kind of text box or anything. All right. Well, I got some, I got some dinner to get in my belly. So, uh, yeah, that's it for today's stream. Um, but I'm not sure what I'll be working on tomorrow. But I'll be doing something else new, I'm sure. So I, I'd like to get these grow back tiles finished tonight so I can do some cool stuff with those and do some great art for them and stuff. And that'll be really fun to add to the game. So once again, thanks for joining the stream. Thanks for chatting and everything. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Hope you guys have a good night. Enjoy. Enjoy, enjoy.